Hello, my name is Nick Walker, and I'm actually dusting off an old project from, uh, believe it or not, started working on this in October 2010. So it was quite um, interesting to, to revisit something which has been um, carrying on a pace with, without our involvement. We were, uh, as a practice, we were commissioned by the Glasgow Clyde Valley Green Network Partnership um, to be part of a European funded uh, Interreg 4C project, uh, ostensibly to look at pulling together a vast amount of information that had been gathered on the area around the Gart Kosh and Gart Loch parts of the east end of, of Glasgow. And I think the reason we were taken on board was to try and visualize what all this information amounted to. There was lots and lots of uh, um, written information, lots of reports, but it wasn't uh, easy to understand exactly what everyone um, had on their doorsteps, if you like. So we were brought in to master plan and vision, uh, a visioning exercise um, to uh, present what was there. So it, it's, a, it's a huge report that we undertook and it actually um, turned into an additional report, um, both of which were about 170 pages long. Um, so I'm going to skip really fast over a lot of different um, aspects of the project and uh, some we could probably talk about for much longer but I can pass on the details and uh, links to the report if anybody should want more information. So essentially right on the doorstep of Glasgow's East End is Scotland's largest urban nature park. It received four million pounds of grant funding back in July 2016 from the uh, lottery fund, really to um, start to allow the Glasgow Clyde Valley Green Network Partnership to put in a whole series of boardwalks, signage, um, and to really give the uh, area um, a sense of identity. It was a project that we carried out um, with, a, with a, a large steering group, which involved um, Cathy, um, who's here today, uh, and covered two uh, councils, Glasgow Council, North Lancashire Council, and it was funded by um, the International Resources and Recycling Institute, um, who accessed the money to the Interreg 4C project. So it was part of a, a large European uh, project looking at hydrology and, and flood risk and, and water across uh, Europe in a, a number of different ways. So this slide really shows some of the um, existing studies that had been carried out um, that we had to, to read and extrapolate information from and really pull together into something more concise and, and, and more legible as a single document. But really it underlines um, something that happened during the course of the project, which happens with many projects. It became much more complex than we had anticipated um, at the start. At first we thought we were looking just at water, but it became very clear that we were also looking at um, uh, roads, infrastructure, and um, 4,000 houses that um, were um, scheduled to be built as part of community growth areas, both across um, Glasgow and North Lanarkshire. So the real question here was, uh, we were looking to protect an area of um, significant biodiversity, uh, triple SIs, places that were of uh, landscape um, interest, um, whilst at the same time we're beginning to know that there was a, um, a demand for housing within the area potentially. So this is the project, probably the only project the office has ever done that you can see from, uh, from space. So, and it's quite funny when you go to the Google map, it sort of comes up with um, Seven Locks Wetland Park now. And indeed, we even got involved in trying to find a more sort of catchy name for, for this area rather than Dark Kosh, Dark Loch. So it has Seven Locks, um, Ice Age Locks, Locks, hence the name um, and as you can see from the diagram at the top it's, it's, a, it's extraordinarily well connected both to Edinburgh and to Glasgow and more importantly to the to the areas around its edges. The top uh, diagram um, shows to the far left the um, Glasgow city centre and then if you like um, a, a path towards the Seven Lost Wetland Park um, where you start off at Hogganfield and you know, showing that within half an hour of the city centre, you can be on the edge of the park. Um, so leaving a very urban area, walking out through the East End, arriving at Hogan Field Loch, which is essentially a, a sort of a, a, a park, an urban park on the edge of the city. And then really wandering into a whole variety of different landscapes and uh, areas from housing estates to uh, churches to 
you know, um, areas with burnt out tires um, to finding deer walking across in front of you. As you can see um, on this slide here, it's quite close to the Glasgow Fort. It's obviously close to Proven Hall, which uh, we were um, just talking about previously. Um, and it's bound on three, well, it's sort of cut in half by the M73, which divides Drumpellier um, Park from uh, the other side of the road where you're sort of more into Easter House. Um, it's also sort of bound by the M8 and bound um, through steps by um, the A80 and the Cumbernauld Road. And these have been both uh, a help and a hindrance, I suppose. They're a help in terms of how incredibly connected the area is to the rest of the central belt, but a sort of a positive hindrance in that the uh, motorways have, and railways have meant that people have tended to just pass by without realizing what's actually on their doorstep. And despite living in Glasgow for 30 years, I didn't know anything about these locks until 10 years ago. I've kind of cut out all the beautiful pictures of what the landscape looks like just to try and save on time. But this is the area that, that together with um, the Glasgow Clyde Valley Green Oak Partnership, we worked out the sort of the, the boundary of the park. And uh, this is where it becomes interesting from a hydrological point of view because um, uh, the locks have obviously formed because they're dips within the landscape. Um, filled up with water and um, the, lot, the park was also um, intended to be somewhere where um, at a future date um, in a one in 200 um, flood risk uh, event water could be stored to stop it from um, flooding other areas such as um, uh, Kirk and Tiller. The diagram at the top shows you um, the boundary between Glasgow City Council and North Lanarkshire Council so working with two councils um, within the same park uh, obviously um, further uh, complicates things uh, and again that was worked out through the, the steering group and the diagram at the bottom really shows um, the, uh, the, the necklace of um, settlements that sit around the outside of the park and you'll note that an awful lot of these settlements are, are places you know, which, which feature quite highly on the index of, of poverty I suppose, Garth Amlet, Craig Enrock, Hazy. Um, Easter House, Her Bridge. Um, so all of these places are really close to this fantastic area of uh, wildlife, um, but probably don't access it as much as, um, as they might do. And this becomes even more uh, important during the period of time we're currently living in um, of COVID and uh, an awareness of health and well-being and the importance of, um, of uh, open space. Um, so again, one of the things we were looking at as part of the project was how do you bring people from far away to a project of national significance, but just as importantly, if not more importantly, how do you make the park accessible to people who live around its perimeter and really make them benefit from being able to go out on walks or take their kids on cycle trips or, you know, in, enjoy the wildlife. So I suppose this is the, this is the end of the project after 15 months. Um, and this is the, the plan for the whole area and it's a, it's a, it's a lovely um, diagram that uh, uh, came together but it incorporates a number of different um, aspects to do with uh, east to west um, continuous uh, walks shown in orange, you know, other walks in purple trying to link together all of the uh, locks, um, trying to access from around the outside. The lighter green area sort of describes a, a further zone of influence if you like. Um, the dotted lines are um, uh, called paths um, and then the green sort of uh, extensions are other parks within the area. But there are also within there a number of sort of green lines uh, if you like and these became significant in terms of thinking of community growth areas and how they might be positively integrated within, within the park. So again in terms of trying to think about the park as, as a whole we then came up with this idea of rather than a single uh, park building where people came and you know had sandwiches and then disappeared off into into the park, we decided that it might be more uh, useful if there were seven local sort of entrance points. Some of those might be existing, like the Easter House Bridge uh, complex or Proven Hall. Uh, some of them might be proposed uh, community centres, uh, such as up at Glen Boyd. But the idea there was to really integrate them within their local areas um, and provide uh, opportunities for local employment. 
um, rather than one big standalone building. So we came up with seven locks and this idea of seven clusters. And within each of the seven clusters, uh, you could you know, take a, a two hour walk um, rather than trying to navigate the entire park. So as I said, I've cut out most of the photographs, but at the top you've got um, uh, Bishop's Lock, the middle is Hoganfield Lock, and the bottom is, I think it's Woodend Lock, uh, mine's gone blank. In terms of hydrology, um, we worked with a number of other um, disciplines, including um, ACOM, um, to really try and work out what the water was doing. Um, there were certain blocks, such as Frankfield, that no one seemed to know where the water was coming from, let alone where it was going to. But essentially, the Garloch pools in the center are formed over the last 40, 50 years and are not locks, um, and they're due to um, a number of uh, different things to do with not looking after the wildlife and the, the infrastructure that was there already in terms of uh, damming up the mosses and what have you. Um, and Frankfield Lock and Hoganfield Lock feed into, um, uh, I've totally forgotten the name of it, sorry, there's a, 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 water, a water body that flows into the city centre, will come back to me, sorry, it was 10 years ago, so <laughs> it's a bit, a bit rusty. Um, and then obviously things like the Monkland Canal, which have been covered up by the motorway. So there's a whole infrastructure of water, um, which is important to understand, to understand how the hydrology is affecting other areas um, outside this particular area and how it can be used as a sump. So again, that was part of our process, um, working with the information that was at hand, working with our consultants. And these arrows sort of diagrammatically just start to show those, those different flows. Um, coming then into habitats and really thinking about um, uh, working with Scottish National Heritage and their um, integrated habitat network LIDAR information. So this was quite complex to get our head around, but it was really again trying to see how through the creation of the park and also um, the potential of all of these community growth areas, um, we might be able to help um, species and habitats link together rather than separating them. Um, and there are some you know, phenomenal um, woodlands here that have been here since the Middle Ages. But there's also a lot of um, farmland, which has basically um, been left to, um, to its own devices, again, because of um, its potential value as, um, for housing. Um, so the farmers tend to do nothing with the, with the land and then set it on fire every now and then to, 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 to clear it back to, to ground level, which is obviously not good for species. So, I suppose the overarching vision was to create a new wetland park of national significance, protect and enhance the heritage and biodiversity, promote general health and well-being, have a major impact on environmental, social and economic regeneration of the area, protect, conserve and enhance the natural environment, biodiversity and cultural heritage, promote understanding, awareness, appreciation of this unique habitat um, and support training and skills. And these are some of the visualizations we came up, up with on the right hand side to suggest what it could be. Uh, these are the seven gateways that we discussed. And again, just showing the con connectivity to rail as well as um, roads. So the key principles were looking at future management of the park and flood risk mitigation, creation of better places by integrating new developments into the wetland park, um, high quality accessible green spaces, um, coordinating environmental enhancements across the area, creating new water bodies, new uh, habitats, um, planning for the future, encouraging education. This was all done alongside a business plan um, by one of our other consultants, which was all costed and all went towards um, uh, ensuring uh, funding from the lottery. And identify specific zones within the park which relate to the surrounding communities. And again, the second part of the, the project really looked at how you might start to make those connections, whether it was a key crossing point across the railway, um, providing safe pedestrian crossings, um, improving existing underpass connections, um, looking at lighting and boardwalks and, and you know, signage really, and just, just make, making people aware of what was there. Um, so another layer of com complexity, um, who owns the park? Obviously, it's not owned by one body. Some of the land is, is council owned uh, between both North Lanarkshire and um, Glasgow. Um, some of it, the grey stuff, has been outlined for community growth. 
the yellow areas are of unknown ownership um, and the purple areas are private. So they're all private landowners. A lot of them are house builders who land banked the land um, for future developments. Um, so we had to go through lots of information that, was, that wasn't a, a, a body of, of, of knowledge where it was all gathered together, but it became increasingly clear that this area of 20 square kilometers, um, six by four kilometers was um, suggested as uh, community growth, potential for communities to grow both from North Lanarkshire and from Glasgow. So if you put all of this into the mix, including this blue line or purple line across the centre of the park, which is a proposed uh, new road um, for economic reasons for Easter House. Uh, maintaining the wildlife and uh, the natural habitats looks a little bit um, tenuous. So we pulled all of this information together, found out what was already under construction, what was proposed, what number of units were proposed for each area. So this area here um, around Frankfield, um, that was under construction and actually having revisited this project in the last couple of days, you know, this area here and other areas have, have already been built in the last 10 years. So um, existing housing stock, you've got a lot of sort of 1950s housing in Easter House 1960s, which you might argue is more legible in that you can understand how you've got pockets of green between houses which then lead out into the surrounding landscape. You've obviously got the precedent buildings of, of farms and how they connect. And then you've got the more recent housing in the centre, which tempts people along to come and live in the seven, left, the seven locks wetland park, but then sort of builds a whole series of very hard to navigate roads, lots of uh, roundabouts, and essentially turns uh, its back on the park and puts up fences or puts a road against the park. So here we're looking at some of the developments that are starting to encroach on the park. And again, you can see just how extraordinary some of the road layouts are. And you know, if you're living in the centre here, you're surrounded by roads, um, there's no sense of front or back, and there's certainly no relationship to the park itself. Um, this beautiful loch here at Frankfield now has a housing estate to one side with a road coming right along its edge, which obviously is a, a barrier to um, species, both plants and, and animals, and then started to develop this area here. You know, whereas there's quite a defined boundary, one might um, suggest, along, along this edge. Now, obviously, there are other things in play here, like um, securing uh, financial contributions, which uh, both Glasgow and North Lanarkshire need. So that, that's obviously a, a pressure. And this is what we're really ending up with, is this sort of um, situation where you've got this, you know, wonderful Ice Age lock. This is a new road, which already looks like it could uh, do with a bit of TLC. And these nondescript sort of houses, which could be in Essex or, or Glasgow or anywhere, um, right on the edge of the of the lock, but actually not enjoying the lock because it's separated by a road. And then once you get inside these developments, this is what you have. It's it's nowhere there. It's got nothing to do with um, its location or the uh, species and wildlife around it. So as part of the project, we we took on uh, another sort of bit of work which which we didn't anticipate, which was really to look at these community growth areas and see how we might suggest that they might be developed so that you might have, you know, this is very high level, um, but how you might start to, to arrange the, the roads so that when you went into one of these community growth areas, there was always a view back to the lock. You know, there was always um, a relationship back towards the areas of um, recreation and where you might actually um, gather water and how that might then um, link back into the, the water courses. So, so trying to deal with the idea of, of um, development, but try and integrate it and, and make it, you know, love the fact that it's actually on, this, on the edge of this fantastic park rather than turning its back on it. On the right, you've got a suggestion of one of the other areas we were looking at. Um, on the left is, is the Frankfield um, uh, built example. And at the bottom of the screen on the right, there's a house developer who has taken on the, the top left and the, uh, sorry, the, the top right and the bottom right are the same site. So the housing developer has taken on some of the ideas that we had sort of put together for how you might develop um, the site and, and make it integrate into the park. 
you can see how the roads do begin to open up onto the surrounding landscape, which is you know, not great, but better than what's on the left. And that's it. So that's kind of where we got to and, and handed uh, the project back to Glasgow and Clyde Valley Green Network Partnership.